ओम शांति टूडेज चैप्टर इज नेम्ड ओम हाई स्कूल होल फैमिलीज वर नाउ ज्वाइनिंग ब्रह्म बाबाज गैदरिंग एंड दे विश दैट अरेंजमेंट्स कुड बी मेड फॉर देयर small children to receive an education there both conventional knowledge the skills of reading writing and arithmetic as well as the spiritual knowledge in this peaceful environment practical subjects such as carpentry and sewing are also to be included brahma baba had also had this idea from the very beginning for if little children could be raised on the principles of purity and virtue great benefit to the world could be accomplished through them so plans went ahead and were quickly implemented a boarding school called om high school was opened for children using brahma baba's own new house for the facilities different ages of children came and the older ones helped teach the younger mothers were put in charge beds draperies and uniforms for the students were made a dispensary was provided cooking and dining rooms were set up additional bath facilities were built the children were brought up like princes and princesses with every convenience made available tenderness and discipline were happily combined the work of the school went forward on the basis of the highest kind of love when the number of students grew the classes were separated there was one class for boys between the ages of 6 and 10 another for girls aged 11 to 14 the program on a typical day went something like this by when the children arise light exercise and a walk followed by a meditation on peace 6:30 am bath and breakfast 8:30 am studies begin 10:30 am recess fruits given for a snack 11 to 1 pm classes continue 1 pm lunch and rest 3 pm classes in spiritual knowledge followed by songs and discussion 5 pm a milk break and then evening walk 7:30 pm dinner 8:30 pm informal talks and counsel about how to attain the best qualities in oneself the importance of purity in food how to handle the everyday problems of life and other points of knowledge which the children asked about 10 pm samadhi 10:30 pm sleep physical health was not forgotten amidst all this attention to spiritual well-being the children were involved in an active program of exercise to keep their bodies strong and robust plenty of sunshine and a variety of play activities kept kept them stimulated and in a high state of consciousness while wearing their uniforms they would enjoy their morning drill at the beach at clifton where brahma baba often took them the uniform did away with the girls consciousness of being female together with their social constraints of being submissive and weak more importantly they learned how while performing their intricate drills they could remain established in the remembrance of god sometimes brahma baba specially took them to the beach in the early morning hours not to drill but rather to sit in silent meditation sitting 
each one some distance apart from the other, they perched on the lonely sand dunes or rocks just jutting out by the surf. In the dawn's clear light, secluded with their supreme father, these souls in young bodies reached an understanding of their own eternity, made contact and remained in loving, silent communication with Shiv Baba for long periods. When the children returned to school, they would take part in karma yoga, cleaning up their rooms, making their beds, mopping the bathrooms and washing their clothing. They kept everything spotless. Visitors found it a joy just to see the immaculate habits these children had infused in themselves. When it was time for meals, they used to come quietly to the dining area and sit in a line to take their food. Until all had received their portions, no one would begin to eat. They observed silence while dining so as to stay in God's remembrance and thus are slowly digesting their meals well and never overindulging. When it was games time, they participated fully and happily, and regardless of whether it was hide and seek, musical chairs, or badminton, sports, sportsmanship was the real point of the exercise. It was a virtue that came easily in that atmosphere. At sunset, it was time to meditate once more and the children were ready for it, sitting peacefully on the veranda and filling themselves with the qualities of the Supreme. When a certain record was played on the loudspeaker, the children knew that it was time for bed. They slept until another record woke them up in the early morning hours and then they arose from their beds to begin a new day. Inspection tours. In a short time, word got around that Om Mandali had opened a boarding school for children. Rumors about it spread throughout the educational community of India. Some said that the teachers of Om Mandali had turned the children into saints. Others reported that the school had made them into zombies. Educators wanted to see for themselves and to be sure they would see the school as it really was. They made their visits un unannounced. Local headmasters, administrators of several educational institutions and several famous educators dropped in for these surprise tours of inspection. And they went over the facilities with a fine tooth comb, looking for something to criticize. The quality of the children's food, method of teaching, the correlation of worldly and spiritual education, morale, test results, all were carefully evaluated and the observers came away astounded. The teachers of Om Mandali always thanked these observers for coming and encouraged them to come again in their unannounced fashion to measure the children's progress. They had nothing to hide and they were happy to be able to give these people feedback for favorable, favorable publicity. The educators who came were awed by the school's success, but at the same time they were worried that it could not last. They suggested that the school register with the government in order to become eligible for economic help because how long could the Om Mandali treasury bear the burden of such an economic drain? But the visitors were told not to worry that this is God's own institution and God is the giver of everything. So the school would never be lacking. People did not understand this, but neither could they argue with success. Often, when these people showed up, the children would be deep in meditation, and some were even in the midst of a trance experience. The visitors watched in disbelief. They found themselves affected by the powerful atmosphere there and became quiet and peaceful themselves. When the children returned from their trance experiences, they would tell of what they had seen describing the wonders of the golden age and the visitors would clearly be touched by what could only be the truth as it came from the mouths of such little children. 
extraordinary maturity of these children amazed all who met them. How could such youngsters be so independent, have so much self-discipline, along, get along with each other so harmoniously, be so devoted to study, and amazingly, how could they sit so long in meditation? Could there be something about the place or the method of instruction? But the teachers were not even professionals. And why was the atmosphere so peaceful? Why was everyone so friendly? How was it possible that there was no conflict? The educators dug deeper, searching either for a hidden scandal or a secret key to his success, to this success. When they finally asked about the children's remarkable maturity, one teacher gave the answer in this way. Of course, the children who came here were all different. Some began as troublemakers, some were incredibly hyperactive, others terribly aloof and closed off. Many had bad habits and caused us trouble. So we went to Brahma Baba and asked his advice. These children harass us, Baba, we told him. What should he do about them? Brahma Baba was very firm in his answer. Don't ever beat them. He said, to beat them is to do violence. This is a great sin. Instead, make them understand about the harm or loss or harm or loss with each which each of their mistakes causes. Help them to see the negative trait which they have and instruct them as to how to recognize the benefit, how to recognize the benefit they will gain by becoming free of it. This must be explained gently and well. If any of their demands are appropriate, you must be careful to fulfill them. You will win their hearts through love and understanding and then they will do as you suggest. You must also explain to them that by doing certain wrong things, they're performing unworthy acts. The fruit of every action is received on earth or else at the time of the final judgment, but it cannot be escaped. The laws of karma are precise and unremitting. When they firmly grasp this truth, they will then be anxious to improve themselves. But do not hate them or mistreat them. Love them. Brahma Baba used to say further, these children have left their homes to come here. So they have already made a kind of sacrifice. They should be respected. Their intellect and their organs of action are not yet completely developed. Yet in some matters, they are superior to adults. If you see them as souls and talk to them like that, they will feel rapport and they will understand immediately. Still, if they do persist in some unworthy activity, then reduce giving them some things they like to have, and then they will improve. For example, do not allow a troublesome child to talk to an individual whom he likes best. Tell him that as long as he does not improve, he cannot speak with this person. And indeed, this technique yielded quick results. The misbehaving child would improve very soon. Tomorrow, we'll look into the chapter called Yo The Yogis Take an Exam. Om Shanti. Thank you. Om Shanti. Om Shanti.